So this short video is about the transversal spinal muscles. Transversal spinal muscles are located deep to the erector spinae. They are another group of uh, the intrinsic muscles of the back, so they are all innervated by dorsal rami of spinal nerves. There are uh, three different transversal spinal muscles. They are united by the fiber orientation, which would be from transverse process to spinous process, primarily. Um, and they are distinguished by their fiber length. So the group of transversal spinal muscles with the shortest fiber length are the rotatories. And these muscles cross only one to two segments. The shorter ones that cross only one segment are the rotatories brevis muscles, and the longer ones crossing two segments are the rotatories longus muscles. The rotatories muscles are best developed in the thoracic region. However, they do exist um, in all regions of the vertebral column. So there are rotatories lumborum, rotatories thoracis, and rotatories cervices. The multifidus muscle um, crosses three to four segments, and these are best developed in the lumbar region. It gets thinner and, and um, smaller as you ascend the vertebral column, but multifidus, like rotatories, does have um, a lumborum portion, a thoracis portion, and a cervices portion. The group with the longest fiber length is semispinalis. It is, um, its fibers cross five to seven segments. However, there is a semispinalis capitis portion, unlike the other two, and these will have a longer, even longer fiber length. Uh, there is no semispinalis lumborum, but there is semispinalis thoracis and capitis, and cervices and capitis. Okay, so let's start with the shortest ones, which will also be the deepest um, of the three, and those are the rotatories. So rotatories, as I said, crosses one to two segments. In the lumbar region, rotatories muscles take origin, rather than from the transverse processes, they actually come off the mammillary processes. Mammillary processes are little bumps that are located on the superior articular processes of thoracic vertebrae. So here we are at um, L5, mammillary process. The rotatories brevis will go to the preceding, to the spinous process of the preceding vertebra, and the rotatories longus will go to the vertebra above that. And you can do that for the entire lumbar region. So brevis, longus, brevis, longus. Um, once you reach the thoracic region, the rotatories do take origin from the transverse processes of thoracic vertebra. So, brevis, longus, rotatories, thoracis, brevis, rotatories, thoracis, longus, and you can continue all the way up. Once you get into the cervical region, the rotatories muscles start to take origin from the articular processes, again, in the cervical region. So, uh, rotatories, services brevis, rotatory services longus, and up you go. Multifidus is uh, very large. It's very well developed in the lumbar region. Its origin is deep to the origin um, of the uh, iliocostalis lumborum that we've already talked about. So it is going to have an attachment to the iliac crest. 
um, the ilium as far back as the posterior inferior iliac spine, as well as the sacrum. These lower fibers will come up and go to spinous processes of these lower lumbar vertebrae. Um, as you start to ascend in the lumbar region, the multifidus lumborum will take origin, um, like the vertebrates, from the mammillary processes of lumbar vertebrae, and then they will ascend and insert on spinous processes that are attached to vertebrae located three to four segments more superiorly. So if we start at this um, mammillary process, I will cross one segment, two segment, three segments, or even longer, four segments. So that's multifidus lumborum. Once you get into the thoracic region, multifidus thoracis uh, does take origin from thoracic transverse processes. So it would start on a thoracic transverse process and then again cross three to four segments. So this is three segments, four segments, three segments, four segments, and you can continue up. Once you reach the um, services region, again, the multifidus will take origin from the articular processes in the cervical region and cross three to four segments. So from the articular process up to three or four segments. Semispinalis does not have a lumborum uh, section. It begins in the thoracic section so semispinalis thoracis will take origin from thoracic transverse processes and cross five to seven segments. So we can have it coming from the same process here and cross one, two, three, four, five segments or even longer, six, and you can continue doing that all the way up in the thoracic region. The cervices, semispinalis cervices, will take origin from the upper six transverse processes in the thoracic region, and again, across five to seven segments. So they end up inserting on spinous processes in the cervical region, hence the services. When you get to semispinalis capitis, this is the best developed portion of the semispinalis. And remember, it also is incorporating fibers from the overlying spinalis muscle of the erector spinae. So the semispinalis capitis fibers can take origin from transverse processes in the thoracic region, in the upper thoracic region, um, as far down as T6 and they will go one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to the skull. The semispinalis capitis inserts on the skull, on the occipital bone of the skull in this region that I'm circling in here in brown. It is um, in the space between the superior and inferior nuchal lines closer to the midline. It's quite a large space. And these fibers end up being almost vertically oriented. Unlike the more obliquely oriented fibers of the um, rotatories and multifidus muscles. <laughs>